Okay, so today we're going to give a presentation on the track 1630 lathe. We'll run through we'll all the uh, startup features, programming options, etc. The track lathe is manufactured by Southwestern Industries. My name is Rich Kunz. Uh, the first thing from a uh, Dead start up on the machine, you have to walk around to the rear of the machine, turn on the incoming power. There's a switch here that'll bring in 110 power that activates the control, turns on the lights, and then a switch on the control that activates the CNC pendant. So that pendant now is booting up off of an internal memory card. Uh, there's a chopped up version of Windows XP on that memory card and loads the prototype software. So it'll take a few minutes to update that. So it comes on in this screen here. It's now looking at your network configure your network, that'll calm down. And we have this key here. First key you press is check system. And strictly for safety features, it requires you to input a maximum spindle RPM. So you want to do this to a maximum RPM that you feel is safe for the particular part and material that you have in the machine. So in a case like this here with a piece of brass that isn't hanging too far out of the machine, it might be something like 1,000 RPM. And that has to be entered. We have these entry keys, the incremental set and absolute set. These are entry keys. So we have to complete that command by pressing either one of those two keys. So now it's in the main menu, or page one of the book, if you will. So a little description of the keys over here, the regular numeric keypad. When you enter dimensional information, everything defaults to positive. You have a negative key here that you can enter a negative dimension if you need to do that. Incremental and absolute set. Primarily you're going to use the absolute set key as your main entry key. There will be some sequences when They'll give you an alternative if you want this feature, enter it with an absolute, versus if you want to select a different feature, enter it with an incremental. So you'll have to kind of watch for that. Spindle forward, reverse, and off. And then you have a feed rate, F for feed rate, S for spindle speed, override, that you can toggle back and forth between the two and increase either the feed rate or the spindle speed, or decrease it. Go on the stop switch, and of course you have the emergency switch, which you want to pay close attention to that if something goes wrong. And so the emergency switch will shut down the spindle instantly, and shut down the CNC motion. At that point in time, when you're ready to resume, you can just pull that out, you haven't lost your program or your setup or your position. So you can continue. So um, while we're looking at the keypad here, on page one of the book, the main menu, you'll have different modes of operation. You're going to have this green dialog box always asking you to select a function. So select a mode of operation, digital readout, it's a manual machine. You're able to come in there and machine the reward piece without programming. The next mode is writing a program. So you go in there, you write a program, returning, threading, grooving, and then you move on to the next mode is grayed out because there's no program in edit. There's no program in parent memory, so there's nothing to edit at this time. You have a setup mode. The setup is going to prompt you to select your tool types. So in certain routines, 
we need to know whether you have a turning tool versus maybe a threading tool. So in the setup mode, you'll have to choose these tool types and go through and touch them off on the workpiece. And only certain routines can use certain types of tools. So if you choose the wrong tool type, it'll alarm out and tell you. The setup mode will also give you a graphical representation of the part. It'll show the tool path. And you want to do that before you go and run the part. So you'll get any alarms, you'll get any visual pictures of if you're going to send the tool someplace that you don't want to. So you want to go through those steps and then once you're satisfied with that you move into the run mode. Of course the run mode's grayed out, there's no program in current memory to run. And then finally the program in and out mode, that's for accessing the network. You can have a USB thumb drive plugged in here to retrieve or save programs, to open up DXF or electronic files that you save to the thumb drive. There's also additionally over here, there's a second USB port that currently there's a antenna for a mouse. Uh, there's a PS2 port if you wanted to use a keyboard. Okay, so I'm going to select the mode of operation. I'm going to go into digital readout mode. So you see the screen's changed again. And then these are the functions within the digital readout mode. Well, first off, I can use the machine means. And I can move the hand wheel on Z. I can select the jog stick, or I can move it on X. So the X axis is always going to be on your cross line. So X is always traveling in or out. You can change the resolution of the hand wheels from fine to coarse just changes the speed, the ratios. And then Z is always going to be here, traveling in towards the workpiece or away from it. So I'm going to place a tool in there. It's a turning tool. I just want to get in there and start doing some machining work by hand. So I want to turn the spindle on. So spindle forward, but at what RPM? So when you look down at these keys here, you have different functions, and one of them is spindle speed. So when I hit spindle speed, it'll ask me which RPM I want to run at. And you'll see it will have two selections. The incremental set key, which would take you to standard RPM, or the absolute set key that would take you to surface speed. For this presentation, we're going to stick primarily with RPM. So I'm going to put in 800 RPM, press the incremental set key. So when I turn the spindle on forward, there's our 800 RPM. So I'm now going to come over to the work piece and then just face off the end of the part. Just so I have a nice clean surface to stop. See that? So at that point there, I want to establish that as the end of my workpiece, so I call it my Z-axis, and just hit the absolute set key, 
that defaults it to the part zero. Okay. I can now turn the spindle on, take a spin, a cut on the uh, diameter. do now is just take a little skim cut, measure that diameter, 1 inch 479, that's the diameter of the workpiece, and I'm going to enter that in as my X value. And if you remember back here, coming away from the workpiece, coming away from the center line is a positive. So, 1.479, call it the x-axis first, 1.479, press absolute set. So now there's the location of the tool. So if I bring this into my zero point, I'm at part zero on Z, and a 1 inch 479 diameter on X. Wherever I move that tool diameter to, that's the diameter of the workpiece on the right. Okay, additionally, some other modes of operation here, uh, we'll go through them one by one, is a power feed. So I don't want to write a program, I just want to take a cut and maybe machine the workpiece down to 1.4 diameter. So with the power feed, you locate the tool from where you want to begin the cut. So I'll begin at zero on Z. And I'll go to a 1 inch 400 diameter. So I'm in position. I'm ready to do that power feed. So I hit power feed. It asks me if I want to feed in X facing or Z along the longitudinal. So I want Z and it asks me the go to value. I'm going to take a 1 inch depth of cut. So negative 1, enter that. And it's asking me to enter that as an incremental value. And so now if I press go, it's going to be in that power feed mode, but there's a few other things to observe. One, the feed rate defaults to 10 inches a minute. That's pretty quick for cutting on a lathe. So I'm going to just simply take the feed override, slow that down a bit to 6 inches a minute, turn the spindle on, Because this is now in an automatic routine, the door needs to be closed before I press the go key. So it's going to travel exactly one inch on Z. I can exit that mode, open the door now because it's no longer in an automatic routine, and pace it back to finish the routine. So that was the power feed function. The do one function within the manual mode allows you to manually cut a taper, a radius, or a fillet. So a little bit here, you can do a complex shape, but do it by hand. No automatic routine. And again, I'll bring the tool to where I want to begin the cut. Z0, and uh, if I go to 1 inch 300, that'll be taking a hundred thousandths jam. So turn the spindle on, activate the taper. The taper defaults to a 45 degree angle, but you can enter any angle you'd like on the keyboard and complete that entry by pressing set. And you can now turn either hand wheel and it will cut that angle. So if I turn the X axis hand wheel or the Z axis, it follows out at that 45 degree angle. I can turn that back by the end. It will always stop exactly where I started. So if I needed to take another skim cut, I can exit that function Crank it in a few more thousands. So 
with the taper again, confirm by 145 degrees, press the set key, and there's a little bit of push. Return, exit set function. We should suspend it. If you're doing something manually by hand and you just wanted manual control, you have the go to function. So it's like setting limit switches that you can't travel past. So if I wanted to go close to the chuck, and that part is about four inches standing up from the chuck. But I wanted to make sure I didn't crash into it. I could say go to the Z axis, negative 3.5, and can't travel past that point. I always go away from it. We had the spindle running. It's a manual routine. It's just a safety. It sees that three and a half inch dimension, won't go past it. That would be with the hand wheels or with the jog stick. Okay. But only in that routine. Okay, moving on. There's a return home key here. This is very critical that you understand where the home position may be. So when you select return home, it says ready to begin, press the go key. Because it's an automatic routine, the door needs to be closed. Pressing the go key will send it home. And in this situation, it gives you an alarm or an error code. And it says, the home position has yet to be defined. Choose setup mode, reference, enter a home. So it won't go anywhere if you haven't set a home position. So set up, reference, X and Z home. So in this case here, since uh, part zero is here, is our workpiece. I want to give it a home of positive Z and positive X. And so that wants to be set at, you know, a good distance so that you have room to get in there, change your tool, and remove your board box. So I'm going to set the X to 4 and also the Z to 4. So now when I go back to digital readout mode and return home, again, the door must be closed. Ready to begin, press go. It's now going to travel to its new home position of X and Z four by four. Okay, so load always brings you to page one of the book, the main menu. 